Today we have a few stories we want to bring to you guys. We got to talk a little bit about that Pokemon Presents. We got to talk about also some updates regarding Rockstar Games and their support of Nintendo Switch 2. But all of that obviously plays secondary to many to you to some Nintendo Switch 2 news we have. We have some idea at the moment, or at least I should probably frame this as rumors about the Nintendo Switch 2 price point and also a massive game engine that Nintendo is starting to slowly commit to for Nintendo Switch 2 games. And you're really going to see this apparently, again, from a rumor perspective, from the next Mario game. That 3D Mario game supposedly is using this engine. Going to be quite interesting if this ends up being correct. So we're going to be talking about that, giving the context for all of this. But before we do, I want to remind you that, hey, we are on a road to 150,000 subscribers. I really would appreciate if you guys would drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And you know what? If you want to, go ahead and ring-a-ling that ding-a-ling so you get notified of every video we upload. All right, guys. So our first story here is actually dealing with Rockstar Games and in regards to the Grand Theft Auto trilogy. So we got this article over here on Go Nintendo where it says Switch was the second biggest platform for Grand Theft Auto Trilogy, the definitive edition in Europe. Now we don't have worldwide sales on this so we can really only go off the data that's provided, but it says earlier this week we found out that Red Dead Redemption is making its way to Switch next week. While Nintendo fans hardly got any love from Rockstar in the past, really, we've just had a very few very sparing games throughout the DS and 3DS. The Switch has paved the way for a bit more content from the company. Today brings us even more insight into why that is. According to the European sales data, Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy, and by the way, this trilogy sucked. I <laughs> put it out there, it was a really bad port, and it still did well. The Definitive Edition was a considerable hit on Switch. Across all platforms the game launched for, Switch managed to take second place overall in terms of total sales. This puts Switch ahead of all Xboxes, so Xbox One and Xbox Series, and PlayStation 5, and it was only apparently just a little bit behind the PlayStation 4 version. With these kinds of results, it's no surprise to see Red Dead Redemption making its way to Switch as well. Let's hope this kind of support from Rockstar only continues, and perhaps one day we'll see day and date releases of Rockstar's latest on Switch's successor. And that's really my conclusion as well. When you think about how well this did, despite it being a pretty shoddy job, it really looks like, hey, they, of course they're gonna bring Red Dead Redemption because look how well GTA sold. Red Dead Redemption's probably gonna, it might even outsell the PlayStation 4 version on Switch. And I do feel that there is an opportunity here for Rockstar Games to continue to build this relationship as they're working on their next stuff. Like I do fully believe Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to end up getting a pretty late port over to Nintendo's next piece of hardware. Of course, then again, would it be that late if it happened in the first year? I don't know. But what I also find interesting is that we already know that they're working on Grand Theft Auto 6. And is there a real opportunity here to see Grand Theft Auto 6 land day and date on Nintendo's next platform? Now, we could maybe make a presumption that we'll get GTA 5 ported over to the Nintendo's next platform, and maybe that's more the conversation we should be looking at. But I think if Rockstar Games is looking at this objectively, they clearly see that Nintendo's audience actually really, really likes Rockstar's video games. And that being the case, maybe they should bring more and more support over. So... I think in the end that this is probably going to lead to Rockstar creating more games for the Switch successor. Now our next story here is going to be dealing with the supposed rumored price point that Nintendo Switch 2 is going to launch at. Now I find it interesting that we have rumors at this point given that the launch could be a year from now or a little bit longer than a year from now. So what these numbers really have to do with reality, you know, because the price could be ever changing behind the scenes. I don't know, but these are rumors that are out there and being reported by some websites, so I want to cover it, and they come from, well, one of our favorite places to talk about rumors from, good old Zippo. Now, we're going to give you the report, and then I'm going to give you some context on Zippo after the fact. So it says the Switch 2 reports are here, and yep, they're the real deal, and he goes over all this other stuff. He didn't pay much attention to the Switch Pro. He says, you know, hybrid cartridge system, once again, check. He's just reconfirming all the things we heard but the interesting part is when we get down here 399 dollars that's the apparent golden number for switch 2 pricing that i've been told by numerous sources familiar with what's going on at nintendo in fact 
and this is the first from me, instead of paraphrasing sources like I've done since I started, I'll let you hear it from the horse's mouth. We'll call this particular source, quote unquote, Chuck. That's not his real name. Here's what they told me. And now this is supposedly directly from his source. $3.99. That's the golden number that they have in mind. It's the price that works in terms of the power of their new system. It's the price that works for them making a decent profit. And it's the price that they think works for the audience they're trying to maintain. No more, no less. Then he goes on to say, so you have it. The Switch 2 is coming next fall. It's going to go back to an LCD screen. And I'm independently hearing that it's probably going to cost around 400 bucks. Now he means 400 USD. Now for full context on Zippo, a, a big thing to remember with this guy is he has thrown a lot of rumors out there and they generally either don't happen or haven't happened or they do happen. He isn't this, I would not call this the level of report that we have done when it comes to the stuff that Andy Robinson from Video Game Chronicle has said or Nate the Hate on his podcast or anything that we've heard so far about Switch 2 over the last week. This is probably the least credible of all of that. So I want you to really take this information with a grain of salt, having the context that, hey, this is a guy who's gotten stuff wrong, but also to know Zippo's gotten some stuff right. He was the first source on the internet to say we would get a 2D Mario this year. It wouldn't be part of the new series, and it would have some pretty significant changes in how the world itself works in terms of mechanics. And well, we have now had Super Mario Wonder announced or Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And yeah, obviously the world does have some ch interesting changes to it. It doesn't use new. So he was right about that. And there has been notes from now retired insider Emily Rogers in the past that Zippo may indeed actually have real sources at Nintendo headquarters. However, he makes the mistake of going forward too early with information where it might be current at the time, but then a year passes, two years pass, a lot of things have changed, and now those old rumors aren't happening or games get canceled. And so that's sort of always been the feather in Zippo's cap is that there was an insider that kind of backed him possibly being legit. That being said... I don't really know, and this would be another one of those cases coming forward with the price right now feels way too early to even have that conversation on a serious level from, you know, because this information would have to come from Nintendo themselves. But hey, that is cool. We're still throwing it out there just because it's a rumor and we can't validate one way or another, just like any of the rest of the stuff we have talked about. Now, we need to get to our next story. and We're going to try to be really quick with this. It deals with the Pokemon Presents. And again, I got to be really careful because I can't show a lot from Pokemon Presents. You'll get copyright claimed. So whatever clip I put up, I really apologize. I just already know we can't really show Pokemon stuff. They're really big sticklers about it. But I don't want to give like a full reaction to the Pokemon Presents here. I already did that earlier in a live reaction. But I do want to give you a breakdown at least on dates on things. So as an example, today, Pokemon Stadium 2 and the trading card game from the Game Boy Color was added to NSO. Detective Pikachu Returns, just as a reminder, is coming out on October 6th. And the Teal Mask, which is part of the Scarlet and Violet DLC, is arriving on September 13th. So we finally have a date for that. No date for the second part, still winter 2023, so we'll see what's up with that. Also, they are doing some Mewtwo stuff. I'm not going to go into all the details. There's going to be a Terror Raid battle where you can get them. This is going to be a free update, by the way. You can also get Mew using the code you see on screen, and I guess if you use Mew in that Terror Raid battle, something cool will happen. There's, there's more details around that. I'll put a link down to their actual Pokemon Presents if you want to get all of the details that were announced today because there's a lot of mobile game stuff we were not going over, new animated series, and all of that. But actually, what is really interesting is this thing from... <sighs> this accusation being lobbied at the Pokemon Company over potentially stealing something from a fan. So on screen right now, you're seeing a tweet by ND Music uh, that says, I'm really surprised and quite honored to hear snippets of my Aerial Zero music arrangement in today's Pokemon Presents DLC trailer. However, the Pokemon Co Company, you could have at least asked me before, right? Now, what's interesting is I wasn't sure that I thought this might have been just an accusation, but thankfully there is a, a, a person on Twitter that put together a quick comparison, and I want to play that for you guys right now.
And yes, it's very obvious that his section of original creation was stolen. Now, the big thing here, and we can note this from, unfortunately, a reply that it really states that, there, that this isn't a legal problem. I, the biggest thing to get upset about is just that the guy would like some credit. You know, why wouldn't you want some credit from the Pokemon company? But this guy named Eric Bundy here on Twitter says, unfortunately, according to sections 101 and 106 of the Copyright Act, your arrangement represents a derivative work of their original music. And since you didn't get their permission to make it, because of course you didn't, you have no legal right to it and they can use your work without your permission. And so from a legal perspective, it does sound like, yeah, the guy can't do anything, but it, he doesn't really want to do anything. If you look at the reply to his own tweet here, it says, I'm not really upset, but rather confused and surprised that an unofficial creation would be included in official content, especially coming from TPC. So he's really surprised that his arrangement got in there, and he just would have you know, liked a heads up, uh, maybe an accreditation you know, at the end of the direct or something, or, or down in the description, right? He wasn't really looking to be fully publicized for it. It just... He finds it to be a strange thing, and he's not going to do anything about it because he legally can't. You just kind of live with it. But it is interesting that they decided to use a fan arrangement and take an original section of that fan arrangement. They, I mean, one, the guy probably feels honored that the Pokemon company thought that was really, really epic. But at the same point, <laughs> you know... Sometimes you want a little credit for your work, but it is what it is. So let's move on to our next story here. And this deals with a supposed rumor, again, surrounding a partnership that Nintendo might be forming with Epic Games to use Unreal Engine. Now, they've already used Unreal Engine a couple of times. There was Yoshi's Crafted World, which was technically made by an outside company, so you can argue that doesn't really matter so much. But then they went ahead and used Unreal Engine 4 again, in Pikmin 4. And Pikmin 4 right now is widely considered to be one of the better looking games. So Nintendo's obviously already dabbling significantly into Unreal Engine with their internal teams. And apparently they want to do a partnership. And this again comes from Zippo where it says an epic partnership is forming. And we go out here to say that Nintendo obviously needs no introduction in either Epic Games but it says, until now, 2019, they talk about Yoshi. It's not Wooly World's Crafter World. That's just a mistake on his part for misremembering which game it was. But I get it. You, you know, Yoshi games, I guess, could run together. But it says, four years later, we finally have our second game at being Pikmin 4. Just look at the environments, the lighting, the particle effects, the amount of detail I put in. It looks incredible. That's not the end of the story. From what I'm now hearing, Nintendo and Epic have formed a rather large partnership in the background. In fact, a number of Nintendo-focused developers will start using their engine for certain upcoming games for Nintendo's next console. Alongside the aforementioned Nintendo EPD Kyoto, some of the developers you'll see using Unreal Engine 4 are Intelligent Systems, so the people behind Fire Emblem, so maybe the next Fire Emblem games using Unreal Engine, Game Freak. Now, this one to me is maybe... One of the most exciting because it finally would be Game Freak getting off of their cruddy old 3DS engine that they keep patching and trying to build on top of and doesn't look or run very well on Switch as we see for Scarlet and Violet. So I'm honestly really hoping that maybe Game Freak considers using it. And no, Unreal Engine isn't just about using realistic visuals, just to be clear. Obviously, we see that with Yoshi's Crafted World. Then we go down to Monolith Soft. Yeah, that would make sense. Look, Monolith Soft makes really big, epic games if they want to switch over to Unreal Engine. Not the worst thing in the world. And then this one, Nintendo EPD Tokyo slash 1UP Studio. And you look at this and you go, that's a pretty good list of development studios and could get bigger. Now, again, which version of Unreal Engine, whether it's 4 or 5, we can't be sure. Unreal Engine 5 does exist on Nintendo Switch through Fortnite. So they could use either one. It's going to be more powerful hardware. Unreal Engine is highly scalable. But this isn't where the story ends because as we scroll down... A little fat, a little birdie has told me is that the brand new major Mario title in the works for Nintendo's next system will be using Unreal Engine 4. And here's hoping that's one of the first games we see running on this thing. Now, to me, that's super exciting. We already know that 3D Mario, or at least have a pretty good hunch from Andy Robinson, that 3D Mario will be launching on this next platform. It's also just the expected thing. They can't launch a, a brand new epic Zelda game like Tears of the Kingdom because that already came out. I mean, they could have a 4K version ready, but that wouldn't be the same thing as a brand new game. So a 3D Mario would be a massive selling point. 
And if it's using Unreal Engine, that's very, very curious. And it also shows that maybe Nintendo is starting to drift a little bit away from internal engines for some of their games that maybe don't need it. And when you look at the mechanics of Mario, I feel like a lot of that stuff probably could be modified to work inside of an Unreal Engine versus Zelda with the physics engine and everything they're doing. That might be more best kept to something like their own internal engine lunch pack, but Hey, this is what it is. I don't really know what to take from this. We know that Nintendo has been increasingly using Unreal Engine since they went from never using it to now, hey, we've used it with an internal studio recently. We also used it with a partner studio. We're probably getting more and more familiar with it, and they do probably want to use it more. So we'll see. Again, I already went over the context for Zippo, so we don't need to go over it again. Take all of this with a grain of salt. That being said... I want to thank all of you guys for being here at my channel. Uh, it's been a wild ride over the over the last, you know, however many years I've been doing this in the last four days. We have a lot more stuff going, uh, to look into going forward. I do have a video in the works right now for Nintendo Switch 2. This is more of a, I would say, a discussion video, but it's, it's one where I am looking at the potential first 6 to 12 month launch lineup. I don't know if you call a whole year a launch lineup, but whatever, the first six to 12 month launch lineup of the entire platform, just from Nintendo's perspective on what games you should maybe be looking forward to and expecting for that first year. And then I also have an idea for a video that I've never done before. It's a reacts video. And I don't do reaction videos very often, but this one will be heavily commentated. Uh, it just, I know there's some drama around React videos, but I basically am going to be stopping the video at points and, and, uh, counter arguing or discussing things on a point by point basis, because there's a certain video out there right now talking about how the Nintendo switch two is going to end up being a failure. And I figure that might warrant some sort of react video like content. So let me know if that's something that you would be interested in to sort of, you know, fill in the gaps or, or give us something to talk about on days when maybe there isn't quite as much, you know, really good news to talk about. And today, because the Pokemon Presents was sort of, well, it, it was what it was. It's kind of a thin day for news. Hopefully tomorrow's a better one. But thank you guys for being here. Let me know what you think about these ideas, and I'll catch you in the next video.